no graven images. That's what God told Moses on the mountain. The God of Israel was too big to fit into a temple, too great to be reduced to a statue. So the Israelites were forbidden to even try to make any image of God. But did anything change when God became flesh? Was an image of Jesus really an image of God? Early in the church's history, these questions didn't really come up. But in the fourth century, when persecution of Christians ended, paintings of Jesus became more common. Now, by the middle of the sixth century, religious icons were a regular part of Christian worship in many places. But all that began to change in the early seventh century. In the year 613, a merchant from the Arabian city of Mecca claimed that the angel Gabriel gave him a message. Now, this man was on a mission from God, or so he thought. The merchant's name was Muhammad. His followers became known as Muslims, and in the year 630, he rocked the Kaaba, which was a pagan place of worship in Mecca, when he carried out all the images, destroyed the statues of the Arab gods. Now, from that point on, many Muslims saw the use of religious images as nothing less than idol worship. Now, during the 600s and the 700s, Muslim armies swept across Africa and Asia. They took Syria, Egypt, North Africa, Crete. They even made it partway across Spain before a general named Charles the Hammer stopped them at the Battle of Tours. Now, in many cases, the Muslims allowed greater religious freedom than Christians had. But still, their negative outlook on images had a big impact. Around the year 726, the emperor of the Eastern Empire said icons were no longer part of Christian worship, and this split Christians into two groups, the icon smashers, or iconoclasts, and the icon kissers. Now, when the emperor sent his officers to smash an icon of Jesus that towered over a palace door, he learned a valuable lesson. Never underestimate the wrath of a woman who's about to lose her icon. See, a crowd of women attacked the emperor's officers with pots and pans, and then a nun named Theodosia knocked him off his ladder and killed him. Now, she was arrested and sentenced to death by having a ram's horn hammered through her neck, which seems like a rather uncomfortable way to die. And then in the end, it would take another church council to decide whether the church would side with the kissers or with the smashers. In the year 787, Empress Irene of the Eastern Empire gathered more than 300 bishops for the Second Council of Nicaea, the last church council that brought together the Eastern and Western churches. And there they decided this, that images of Jesus, Mary, angels, the saints, all of those, it was okay to hang them in churches and in homes, but only if they were two-dimensional images. Statues were forbidden, and no image was ever to be worshipped. So the kissers won, and icons continue to be part of the worship in both East and Western churches.